Hey guys, welcome to Ace Alshima's Authentic Samurai Channel. I'm your host, Ace Alshima. If you've ever seen or heard of any classic samurai films, there's a good chance you've heard of Kurosawa films. And in one of the Kurosawa films called Tsubaki Sanjuro, or simply known as Sanjuro in English, there's a very cool final duel that features a very unique move. This move, alongside Zatoichi's flash cut and a few others, are one of the most famous moves in all of classic samurai film history. So in this episode, I'd like to share and break down how to do this move so that you guys can uh, learn how to do it. Alright, so without further ado, let's check it out! Alright, let's get right into it. First, I'll demonstrate it for you, and then give you a quick breakdown, and then a detailed breakdown for those, those of you who want it. Alright? So here we go. Alright, so here's the quick breakdown. First, I'm using my left hand to draw in reverse grip. Next, I'm turning the blade inwards 90 degrees so that the blade cutting edge is pointing towards my body. Third, I unsheathe the blade completely. And then fourth, I'm using the back of my hand to push the spine of the blade outwards. So from here, back of my hand, like so. All right, so that's the quick breakdown for you guys. And if that's enough for you to practice, great, you know, go ahead and have fun. But uh, since this move is rather tricky and, you know, I had trouble myself, I'll try to go over the parts that I had trouble with and uh, help you guys understand it in more detail so that you wouldn't have too much trouble following or practicing yourselves. The first one is getting the grip right. Because this grip is very awkward and uh, it's sort of, it's very hard to grasp, I think. If you've had any experience using katana, you would know that this, is, this does everything backwards. Like usually you would use your right hand to draw in forward grip, right? But this one, we're using our left hand in reverse grip, right? And for those of you who, who might not be familiar with forward grip and reverse grip, I'll show you an example. So this is forward grip. That's reverse grip, right? It's basically which side the blade is coming up from. If the blade is on your thumb side, forward grip. If it's going from your pinky, reverse grip. And notice that the edge is aligned with your knuckle both times, right? is not pointing inward towards you or away from the knuckle. I mean, there might be some really unique move that does this on purpose, but usually when you do reverse grip, the, the edge is aligned with your knuckle, right? The reason why I'm saying this is because if I were to reverse grip the sword with the left hand, I have to start like this which is a very awkward move. It feels very awkward too. It's a lot easier to hold it like this, right? But if I draw like this, then notice that the blade is pointing towards my, my, myself. It's not aligned with my knuckle, which means if I were to actually do the move, I would cut my fingers and I would not cut anyone, <laughs> right? It doesn't work. So, in order to reverse grip this sword, with my left hand, what I need to do is wrap my hand around the bottom side of the hilt and grab like this. I mean, to be fair, once you get a hang of this and start practicing for speed, you wouldn't go all the way like this and you would cheat it a little bit, but you might as well do it properly first so you can cut corners later. Okay, so the next part is probably the hardest. If you don't really have decent experience uh, handling this katana, this is what's most likely going to happen. Turn, draw, right? It doesn't come out. So, what do we do? The explanation, explanation for this part is going to be a little bit long. So if you just want the answer, you can skip to the next section. But 
If you want the explanation or to understand why, then you can keep on watching. So in order to deal with this, let's backtrack a little bit and go over what our range of motion is and how that relates to drawing a sword. So this part, I'm going to use my right hand to draw, and we're going to put aside what the right way to draw is, okay? Because there's many different philosophies, different schools have different ideas, and this is only for people who are unfamiliar, unfamiliar with using the sword. And if you know or if you follow a certain school, please go with that. But for those of you who don't have that background, I'm just going to approach this as a simple ergonomic puzzle. The problem we're trying to solve is that the sheath is attached to our left hip, the sword is a straight long object that doesn't bend, and we need to create enough distance from our left hip to our hand in a linear fashion so that the blade comes out. We can move it enough so that the blade comes out. So now we know that this doesn't work. But what if we change the angle this way? Not quite. What if we went even further? Now it works. So we can tell that by changing the angle this way, we get more distance than going this way. What about if we change the angle this way instead of that way? Not quite. What if we change the angle further, like this? Aha. So now we know that instead of drawing just out like this, drawing up way this way or away creates more distance. And in order to take best of both worlds, if we draw diagonally like this, we actually make the biggest distance, create the biggest distance between our right hand and our left hip. The, while you may feel like, well, no one draws like that, here's an, a practical example. Well, actually, there are certain schools that draw like this, so there is that too, but aside from that, what if I do this? and turn just this way and face that way. Now it sort of makes sense, right? Even from like scarring off, I can pull my back leg or step forward and then draw like that, right? And sure, some, some of the schools would say, well, we don't pull her back, or you need to keep your uh, hips square to your opponent. But I can still draw, right? Why? Because it's a, bit, it's a bit of this and a bit of that, right? So I don't have to go all the way here to draw. I can, I can angle it a little bit this way and angle it a little bit that way to draw. And if I want to keep my tsukagashira towards my opponent, and if this is not enough, I can slightly, I can slightly twist or sink in to create that extra distance to draw. I mean, I'm not gonna get into all the details, but my point is, it's like a combination of these angles, basically, is what you're doing and where you're placing your opponent, right? So it's sort of a fundamental understanding of how our body is made. And based on this, you could build more about like working your internal muscle and creating space within you and all that. But for this, you know, these two angles help, help you draw. So how does this all portray to our left hand reverse grip draw? We know that one option to increase distance is drawing upwards like this. And the other option we had was to draw diagonally. Well, it doesn't quite well, it doesn't quite work because that only worked when you're drawing with your right hand and the sword is on your left hip. This works. So in order to this to be the same condition, my katana would have to be on my right hip for it to work. But since we're wearing our katana on our left hip, Going diagonally doesn't quite work. So what do we do? 
our only, only option is to draw upwards. All right, so I'm gonna make a quick uh, cue for the people who are sk skipping the chapter. All right, ready? So the solution is to draw upwards. And all right, well thanks, we're drawing upwards and then what, cutting like this, like upwards that way, when the opponent is over here, right? Well, what do we do? We need to draw upwards, but the opponent's in front of you. Well, what if I did this? Now it starts to make sense, right? So, what I'm actually doing in my clip too, is that I draw upwards, but lean over like this, or fold over like this. Now it's aligned and I can cut. But instead of just like leaning over like this, I take a step. Take a step forward and align myself like this. But if I were to make myself upright again, see, I'm drawing upwards instead of drawing forward. So this is how everything is done, or at least these are the small kinks that I had trouble with um, when I was doing this, when I was doing, learning this move. So re to go over the whole thing again really quickly, first, wrap your hand around the bottom side of the hilt to do the proper left hand reverse grip. Rotate 90 degrees, and draw towards my head, but at the same time, take a step forward and angle my body. This allows me to draw the sword completely. And then now, push the back, back of the spine, uh, push the spine with the back of my hand to perform the cut. All right, so that's the detailed version of the explanation. I hope it helps and have a blast performing. And lastly, some ending trivia for you guys. Um, it's obviously a very unique move because Mr. Kurosawa wanted something really special for his final duel. And this move is actually driven from a real Kenjutsu technique that's actually now lost. But still, like, I want to make sure that everyone understands that what I'm sharing here is performance. It's what Mr. Mifune, the lead actor, Mr. Mifune, was doing to make that film. This is not intended to be like a real Kenjutsu technique. It's meant for entertainment and not for, like, killing or real fighting, okay? And remember I just told you to lean forward, you know, to create that distance, right? Lean forward. Well, if you watch Mr. Mifune closely, he's actually not doing that too much. And here's the secret. He's not doing that because he's using a shorter sword. Um, I, I, don't, I can't talk about it too much, but I confirmed this with a primary source, so I can guarantee you that it's true. And uh, if you watch closely, right, at the very end of his draw, or after, right after he finishes the cut, and right when he turns around, you can sort of tell that the sword is about like an inch or so shorter. And, uh, and if you actually watch, keep on watching, you never, see his, you never see him sheath the sword on camera. I mean, it's on camera, but it's hidden by his sleeve, so he get, you can't really see the length. Um, and there's small camera tricks like he's actually cutting diagonally instead of like right forward to sort of like warp the angle so it's harder to tell that he's using a shorter sword and all that. I'm not saying that he couldn't draw that sword. I'm 100% sure he could have. But because of the lack of technology they had back in the day and like the blood gushing out like that, it's no CG, right? <laughs> so like they could only shoot that scene like basically once. Right? And I'm sure Mr. Kurosawa wanted that kind of like tension, like the real tension to be captured in the film too. So just so to be, have that extra caution or extra uh, security of making sure that he can draw properly, I think they decided to go with a slightly shorter sword. I mean, the actual scene of the, that duel of two of them like going at each other, there was no cue of like ready, go. Like Mr. Mifune was working off 100% off of the other actor, uh, Mr. Nakadai, and he was just reacting to Mr. Nakadai's cut. So the tension's real. He, none of, 
Like, Mr. Mifune doesn't know when he's gonna start cutting. So, there was a chance of, like, error, right? So I think that's why they decided to make the sword slightly shorter, shorter to secure that a little bit. Uh, but for the rest of us who can't have a sword custom made to be slightly shorter so we can just perform this sword, uh, perform, perform this strike, we have to find a way to use what we have and actually actually draw. So that's why I teach you. I taught you guys to slightly uh, uh, tilt forward to give you that extra reach. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. I hope you guys enjoyed performing this technique, and I'll see you next time.